As we all know, NVIDIA just had their rather lengthy conference at GTC 2017. And this was a course done by Jensen Huang at that very same event. And there was a lot of information, to be honest. I mean, obviously, we all hoped for a big reveal of Volta, the specifications of the consumer version, pricing even, maybe, maybe even a release window if we're doing really lucky. But to be honest with you, we have only really gotten a preview of Volta. Most of the conference was dedicated to AI and deep learning, as well as, of course, the very expected mention of self-driving cars. But let's go through the sort of less important stuff first, and then we can get to the juicy bits of the Volta reveal. I will say, even though deep learning is obviously not really relevant to gaming all that much, it still is very interesting, you know, Jensen spoke about automation, automating, well, other programs, basically, so automating automation, and spoke about how it can be taught to recognise his face, for example, and also to recognise someone else's face as being different from his, and also being able to reproduce that face in a virtual environment. And he showed what looked like to be some very powerful image restoration with deep learning once you've taught this particular supercomputer or whatever it happens to be enough, if you give it a sort of damaged image, perhaps, you know, several pixels are missing or it's just a poor quality image, it can sort of recognise this is supposed to be X and this is supposed to be Y and fill it in and bring the image quality up to where you can actually see the complete image and basically fill in the damaged sections spoke about being able to recognise a piece of art by Picasso and recognise it as a Picasso and also reproduce that very same work of art as well. So a lot of interesting applications that could be used for this. You know, a lot of analytical possibilities. He spoke about being able to do something called photo style transfer, which pretty much is what it says on the tin. You have two photos, you tell it to say, as in the conference, take a photo of like a sunset or whatever and use that same style and put it over the second image to basically create a unique image while it's still looking realistic because obviously with, you know, previous efforts we have been able to see the flaws. Buildings are not like buildings anymore or whatever it happens to be, you know, it, it, the image has become warped in the AI's efforts to do what it's been asked to do. But I will say the results of this were pretty damn impressive. But really the star of the show was the little that we got about Tesla. We have got the first announcement for the very first Volta computing card. The Tesla V100. And well it's pretty damn impressive but obviously this is not consumer level. Now this is going to be a 12nm FinFET GPU and... It's going to have NVLink with a bandwidth of 300 gigabytes a second and is also going to have 16 gigabytes of HBM2 operating at a staggering 900 gigabytes a second. Obviously, it is Volta architecture and has 5,120 CUDA cores and 21 billion transistors. It is the biggest GPU ever made and has a die size of 815 millimeters squared. Now what's more interesting is the presence of a new type of computing core called the Tensor Core and the purpose of this is a deep learning matrix arithmetics and according to Jensen the cost of developing the Tesla V100 was three billion dollars which is crazy. Let's compare this to the Tesla P100 which obviously is Pascal and you've got 15.0 Teraflops of FP32 computing performance in comparison to 10.6, 5120 CUDA cores in comparison to 3584, a 1455 MHz core clock in comparison to 1480, and also 900 GB memory bandwidth versus 720. It does have the same memory type, you know, 16 GB HBM2, and of course we have NVLink 2.0 rather than NVLink 1.0 or PCIe 3.0, depending on your variation. And he spoke a little bit about the efficiencies in how it executes things versus Pascal and a bunch of other stuff. As I said, this isn't consumer level. This is Tesla. So unfortunately, we didn't get the big consumer reveal 
that we wanted, but still. Now also present is a new type of streaming multiprocessor by the name of Volta SM, which has mixed precision tensor cores, as well as enhanced power efficiency, clock speeds, and L1 data cache. As I've already said, 1455 MHz and peak computing power, excuse me, words of 15 teraflops in 32 bit operations. All in all, it is a very impressive and, as I've already said, expensive piece of technology and I guess it gives us an idea of what to expect for the consumer version, but obviously we're not going to be getting this in our computers at home anytime soon. But regardless of that, the Tesla Volta V100 was very, very impressive indeed. But as I said, the main focus of the event was deep learning. And as such, we got an announcement for DGX and HGX Tesla Volta computing stations. Now, again, these are not for consumers because, well, the DGX1, just for example, is $149,000. The DGX1 machine has eight Tesla V100 GPUs and 960 Tensor T-flops of computing power. And just to put this in a bit of perspective that actually means something, some context if you will, this basically means that what used to take 400 servers can now be just the one box with the DGX1. So the DGX1 replaces 400 servers. And Jensen did say that this will be shipping in the third quarter of this year. Now, as well as this, we have the DGX station, which is 69,000 US dollars, and it has four Tesla V100s, and it's going to be PCI based with three DisplayPort connectors. So, still pretty damn impressive. And there's also going to be a water cooled version of Volta called HGX1. which is going to be used with sorry for cloud computing and will ship again with eight Tesla V100s. And I'm also going to finish up with some comments from Jensen said during the keynote at GTC regarding their work on deep learning and Volta. And he said, quote, artificial intelligence is driving the greatest technology advances in human history. It will automate intelligence and spur, spur a wave of social progress unmatched since the Industrial Revolution. Deep learning, a groundbreaking AI approach that creates supercomputer software that learns, has insatiable demand for processing power. Thousands of NVIDIA engineers spent over three years crafting Volta to help meet this need, enabling the industry to realise AI's life-changing life potential. Now, I've spoken a lot about the specs in this video, but you're probably wondering, well, okay, that's real nice, and you've given us a little bit of a preview as to how it very faces off against Pascal, but to put it into, again, a more, I guess, digestible perspective, it is a five times improvement over Pascal, and peak teraflops and 15 times compared to Maxwell which launched only two years ago and also is four times the improvements that you would have expected thanks to Moore's Law. But now we've spoken a little bit about the broad strokes let's talk a little bit more about the Volta GV100. It has six graphics processing clusters, 84 Volta streaming multi multiprocessor units, multiprocessor units, 42 TPCs, each including two SMs, and these each have 64 CUDA cores, that's the 84 SMs, excuse me, per SM, so we're looking again at 5376, and again, these can be used for FP32 and INT32 programming instructions, we we'll also have 2688 double precision cores. In terms of the memory, it is going to be getting a rather nice update with eight 512-bit memory controllers and has brought to the table a total of 4096-bit bus interface, which again is the 16 gigabytes of HBM2 video memory. Now, while I don't want to promise on his behalf, as he is enjoying some well-earned time off this evening, 
I would imagine that Paul is going to be doing a deep dive into what we know about the Tesla Volta V100, his opinions on the architecture improvements, what we can expect for con con the consumer variation. Again, no promises, but I would imagine that he is going to want to get his teeth stuck into this information. I'm just here to give you basically the cliff notes of what was a very long and very meaningful, very information-filled conference from NVIDIA at GTC this year. So, with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.